The Small Business Show, episode 345 for Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome back. Or welcome to, if it's your first visit here, the Small Business Show, where... We spend our efforts small business-ing each week. We like to take action, and therefore, we've made it a verb. Sponsors for this episode include LinkedIn.com slash SBS, where you can post your first job for free, and NetSuite.com slash SBS, where you can get uh, their access to their one-of-a-kind financing program. We will talk more about all of those uh, details in a few minutes here. For now, here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And still here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I was so I'm close to you, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I mean, so close yet so far. I was I was oh. clear on the other side of the bay, uh, the San Francisco yep. Bay, than, uh, than from you. And so we did not get to see each other, but f- partially because of distance, but also partially because of the reason that I was in the Bay Area. And that was that there were uh, fires in Lake Tahoe where oh, I was planning crazy. on going. And yeah. you have a home and a uh, rental home and in we Lake do. Tahoe we that, do. that you had to deal uh, with. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. did. And it's, it's been a, a crazy month of, uh, f- you know, watching and checking status of things and communicating with people. We have a couple of properties, one up in the mountains and the Trinity River, one up in Tahoe, and both of them were right in the line of fire. Uh, and uh, luckily, at the last minute, uh, both of these fires kind of veered away. And so we got some protection on those houses, right. but it's just been an emotional, uh, financial and just a headache to deal with. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, we're, ha- I'm happy that, uh, that we're on the backside of those, but I have another frustration I'd like to talk about for just a moment. What do you, what, go man. Topic. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to report. I just paid back, uh, one of my EIDL, Loans, economic injury disaster ah, loan, right? So different from the grant in in that it was a loan yep. that you had to pay back. Okay, yeah, and it, it came part of it. It was a little grant on the front end of it, yeah. which was cool. Yeah, uh, and the, yeah, and it was great. And I never really even used it, but it was an awesome safety net, and I thought it was just a great idea. Uh, and and it and it helped. I just I think thousands and tens of thousands of businesses. So it was great. Yeah, but. Like most things in the government, and I'm not going to get on a big government rant. Uh, I'd like to, but I'm not going to today. <laughs> it, it, very difficult, not easy to pay it off. It reminds really? me of, well, easy to just go in, log in to pay.gov and, you know, kind of dump, but nowhere to get a payoff amount online. Oh, that would we, show- dealt, we dealt with this for the company that we have that uh, under which Small Business Show is, is organized. Yeah. We, it was the same yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it was, it was not easy to go and say, please end this. I just want to, yeah, I just want to send you a check and pay whatever, yeah. you know, small amount of interest uh, is, is exactly. uh, yeah. open. And I, I, it just, you know, it, it reminds me of how frustrating it can be. We did a show recently all about returns. And if you make them easier, you build customer loyalty and ease frustration. Well, this is just like the exact opposite. Because then, you know, the the representative I have at the SBA, reach out to them, very nice person. They can't tell me either. The only way I can get it is to call an 800 number and uh, wait on hold for, you know, an epic amount of time. And uh, yesterday after on hold for about 26 minutes, the system, and I'd never had this happen before, the, the auto attendant came on and said, there's been a technical error and all calls have been disconnected. Oh. Click, <laughs> and that was it. What? Uh, yeah, I never heard of it in my life, and and I said, "Wow, a technical error," and only with the government because they're probably using some 1978, you know, uh, version of an auto attendant voicemail system or something. But if you have an easy way to find out what uh, the EIDL payoff is, please send me an email feedback at businessshow.co. I'd love to find out. Um, a quick way to do it and find it online because I, I have no reason. So I'm going to reach out to our, our vast, uh, audience of super smart people and, uh, see if they can come up with some ideas, see if they can help you. Yeah, no, I, I had to go through, jump through hoops just to pay off. I, I mean, I definitely spent way more time than it was worth to Silly. figure yeah. out how to pay them back. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Speaking it is. of, of worth it. Um, I, I, I 
had to make last minute travel changes uh, last week, right? Because I was supposed to go to Tahoe, even though we oh, right. knew we weren't going to be in Tahoe. That's where all our plans had sort of aimed us. And uh, and we knew we were going to wind up not going to Tahoe, whether we wound up in winding up in Mountain View, California. I, I did not expect I expected that the concerts that we were going to see in Tahoe would simply be canceled or postponed to 2022 or something. And we would just go home or something. I, you know, I don't know what sure. we would have done. Uh, and we sort of knew, and we not sort of we definitely knew that as we were flying out. We flew out on Wednesday night, the 25th, literally as our plane is touching down into Portland where we were dropping our son off. We start getting the messages that somehow the the management for the band Fish, who was the concerts we're going to see, had pulled off the logistical gymnastics of moving yeah, concerts that were happening five days later. Right. Like, I, I don't even they were rumors that this was in the works. It was like, there's no freaking way. It's impressive. Man. It's really impressive. Yeah. So then I had to pull off the much, much easier logistical gymnastics of simply going to a different spot, which was super easy. But I I know how it gets when there's concerts. And if you don't book your hotel right away, then you can't have a hotel within walking distance to the venue. And you've got to deal with, you know, all those problems. What I didn't know at that moment in time is our planes touching down and I'm getting these notifications that, the you know, the concert has moved and all that. What I didn't know is that there are no hotels within walking distance to That's correct. the venue. Right. But yeah. I know that now. So I was very quickly trying to book and I, you know, I found um, we're Marriott people because we were Starwood people. And so, um, you know, I'm looking through the Starwood stuff literally on my phone as the plane is like, you know, touching down and bouncing off the runway and, and taxiing. And I found the uh, residence in Mountain View, Palo Alto or something. Uh, yeah. And uh, and I saw like rooms were disappearing on this. And so I couldn't I tried to get a, a you know, a suite with a queen. I wanted something where I had a kitchen because I knew we were going to have to be doing work during the day. So I wanted a little bit of room. And those residence inns, you know, tend to have a little more room than just a typical hotel room. And I watched as the queen suite went away. And so I wound up with the penthouse suite, two bedrooms. Nice. Yeah, it, the space wise, it worked out fine. I should have known, though, when they charged me one hundred ninety dollars a night for the penthouse suite that I should not set my expectations too high. <laughs> That's a broad interpretation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it was cheap and worth uh -huh. it. Uh, but you know, it was fine. Like we had room to work. And for somehow they, I don't, I still don't understand the Shannon. Every morning, not just one morning, every morning. For approximately four hours. And I can't stress enough that I am not exaggerating here. Like this is I, I, I'm still flabbergasted that for four hours every weekday morning, they emptied the dumpsters. And it was nice what? because our penthouse suite oh, no. had a beautiful view of the dumpsters right outside our our front door. I, I don't know how you empty a dumpster for four hours. <laughs> But they pulled off that we thought fish moving the concerts was an impressive feat. Emptying the dumpsters for four hours. That's even more impressive. So, uh, yep. Be, be aware when you are booking things. I know we all know this, but, you know, the, the phrase cheap and worth it comes to mind when I'm thinking about this stuff. And uh, and I definitely proved it to myself again. So and I really wasn't looking necessarily to save money. I was just looking to grab a room that was going to be functional for us. And it was yeah. functional. It, like it was yeah. totally fine. It, but yeah, it was interesting. Put in earpods and uh, so you don't yeah. have to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we're going to concerts, so I wanted to kind of sleep in a little bit, but you know, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fine. Um, That's good. I spent the morning, Shannon, uh, dealing with probably the final round of uh, effort in the process that I've been going through of moving one of my businesses from one accountant to another. So we're moving Backbeat Media from uh, an account that we've had for probably 20 years to a new accountant that I've had for other businesses here. So it's not it, it's not a brand new accountant to me. I've known this person for a couple of years. They've been doing one of my other businesses. And uh, and I had a New Hampshire issue with Backbeat. And this accountant is more skilled with New Hampshire stuff. So it made more sense to move the whole business to him. And uh, it's been an interesting I knew that there would be. I mean, I, I was actually happy to move to him. He sees things a little bit differently and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Um, sure. You know, there are stylistic differences. There are risk tolerance differences from person to person and therefore from accountant to accountant. And 
So I was, I was actually excited to move to this guy just to have somebody taking a different look at things. And, and it has been helpful. What I misunderestimated to make up a word was how much effort it was going to be to take a, you know, 20 years of habits and, and, you know, not everybody, everybody has the things about which they are diligent. And so there are some things that my old accountant was very diligent about that the new guy probably, you know, may or may not be, but there were definitely some things that my old accountant wasn't as diligent about that my new guy is. And so, and I knew this, but I, I didn't quite wrap my head around how much effort and sort of the pain of digging through the past and, and explaining things that had become habitual, right? Like, Oh, we, we do it's this yeah. way because we've this always done it this do way. It. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, well, why do you do it that way? It's like, well, dude, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's yeah. because we do it that way because it's the way we do it. Like, tell me why we need to do it a different way. Tell me why we need to do this. He's like, okay, well, here's this and this, and the other thing. And it's all been great. And it, it's been a fantastic learning experience. I actually enjoy accounting. There have been moments this past week and a half where I have not enjoyed accounting at all um, because it's just been too much of it. Uh, but it's, it's been valuable. I'm glad we're here, but you know, with the deadline of September 15th, which is the day the show comes out, we obviously record before it comes out. The deadline of that sort of looming down on us, we, yep. we had to, you know, we had to get the return ready. And so that meant cleaning up, you know, not 20 years of books, but maybe three years of books so that the that which leads into 2020 looks right so that 2020 can be right. And now 2021 will probably be way easier because we've sort of, you, you know, paved this path that this new guy works with better. And I think it is better, but um it's yeah, well, they different. figure out like, yeah, like you mentioned the stylistic differences. That's I, what it I, is. I liken it to you, when you go, if you go get a new barber or a new yeah. hair stylist or whoever to cut your hair, Super one of the stressful. things I always hear is like, who cut your hair last? <laughs> you know, and with this kind of, wow, okay, I can fix this. I can fix that. And and I think accountants are the same way. It's like, well, you know, why did they, why did you do this? Why'd right. you make this decision? And it's just everybody's background, different things. It's and, different and I think things. It's a, yeah. yeah. And it, it's a good thing you've done it you've kind of migrated it slowly. I think that's great. It, the last thing, uh, especially, you, you know, towards the end, cause I'm like you, uh, with the LLCs and businesses, you know, September 5th, I'm, I'm always extending things. And then your personal stuff, October 15th, it just, that's always the way it works out for me. Yeah. Um, cause oh, you're for, waiting for, for sure. paperwork, yeah. paperwork coming in, things are happening. It just never seems to come on time. So, you know, my accountant's used to it now, but when you, when I first changed them, it's constantly like, okay, are you going to do this? Do we have to file this? What do we have to do? So you have to give them plenty of uh, background on how you operate. I think totally. it's important. That's what, you know, and that's what I realized, it, you know, there was a moment in the middle of this process where I thought I have chosen the wrong guy. Like I'm committed for 2020 yeah. because I've only got 10 days left and I'm definitely not going to change horses again, but I've got the wrong guy. He is, I've always said you have to find an accountant who is slightly less risk tolerant than you, but that gap can't be too big. Otherwise you wind up, you know, I'm, I'm someone who I don't believe in, in cheating the system. I believe in understanding the system figuring out yeah. my, the best path through it and then taking it. And some of that, some level of that comes with the understanding that at some point in time, you may be called upon to have a conversation with a straight face with the IRS about why you chose to take that particular path through their rules. And that's totally fine. Like, you know, I, I get that and, and they may disagree and then you, you have to have a, a deeper conversation. Right. And that's okay. Um, your account, I, I like to have an accountant who is slightly less risk tolerant than me so that we can push and pull on each other a little bit and, yes. it, you know, and have that, but the That's gap, the gap can't be too, so wide that you, you never find a middle ground. Right. You, you know, yeah. and I, yeah. because this guy needed to learn this business, he was asking lots of questions that I interpreted as Oh man, this guy's not going to like the answer to this. He's not going to like the answer to how we do this. This is he, he wants everything. So by the book that I'm not going to take any deductions ever. Right. And, and there were, there were about three days where I felt that way. In the end, I was totally wrong. He wasn't asking the questions to question me or question why he was asking the questions 
to question why so that he could yeah. understand. Understand it. That's yeah, they all. They need to understand it. Yeah, he, he needs to understand this stuff so that he, he feels comfortable putting his name on it. And also That's so he right. can help me. Yeah. Yeah, I found that if if you come barreling into a new accountant and you're Mr. Risk Tolerant and this and I don't, it, it, it can kind of freak him out. Yeah. So it's, it's, you do have to ease yourself into it and discuss it so they can get to know you um, uh, similar to a financial planner. They, they're, they're trying to build a, a profile yeah. of, okay, uh, th- this person's comfortable doing this way and this is how they do it. And this is how they run their, their business and they intermix this or their personal life. And uh, so you want to, you want to give yourself plenty of time. It's not a quick transition. If you know, if you think you're going to drop on the new person in 30 days and you're going to have it all figured out, it's just not going to work. You're going to have a bad time if that's your expectation. Yeah. Well, my problem with, and that's sort of what I did because I've been working with this guy on a different company for a couple of years now. So I figured I, and it's like, it's been going well and everything's great. And I thought I understood, you know, where he sat on a lot of different issues. And it turns out I did. I just misinterpreted the questions he was asking about this new business simply because it's new to him, you, you know? And so, yep. um, yeah, I came, I did come barreling in thinking, Oh, this is going to be, this is cake. I, I know we know how to work together. This is no problem. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah. and it will be no problem. It just was a little bit time. painful. I have yeah. a, th- something came up uh, about dissolving an LLC. And I want to ask your opinion on this. Uh, the first thing that I want to do, though, is talk about our two sponsors. Our first sponsor today is NetSuite. Look, tackling your business's financial to dos can be daunting enough, as we've just talked about, <laughs> without being slowed down by QuickBooks. I've been experiencing this this week. This is timely for me. More like slow books, maybe? NetSuite by Oracle is the number one financial system, no matter how big your business grows. With visibility and control of your financials, your inventory, your HR, your e-commerce, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. It, 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 you got to go. It's netsuite.com slash SBS is where you're going to go to check out what they've got. They, they, they call it the first cloud ERP platform, right? And they help over 26,000 customers gain visibility, control, and agility to build and run successful companies. And special financing is back. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program for only those ready to switch today. So head to that URL I mentioned, netsuite.com slash SBS right now. That's netsuite.com slash SBS. Go check it out. I think you're going to like what you see. And our thanks to NetSuite for sponsoring this episode. Next up is LinkedIn Jobs. Look, we know how it goes, right? Today, we small business owners are, I don't like to say busier, we are more productive than ever. All that time spent searching for and interviewing candidates can take time away from being productive, managing and growing your business. But you still need to do it because bringing on employees is one of the best ways to grow your business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs has made it easier to get to the candidates worth interviewing faster. And I can't stress this enough. It's free. We just did this. We you just use LinkedIn jobs and we posted our job for free uh, on LinkedIn jobs to, and it's how we wound up with Sadie uh, that, yeah, that, right. you know, that's doing all this work for this show, for a couple of other shows for, for, for us here at, at backbeat media. And we wound up with so many good candidates. I was shocked at just how great the, the tools and everything are and the candidates are with LinkedIn jobs. And, and that's the thing, right? You can create a free job post in minutes, to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. And their tools allow you to focus on candidates with the skills and experience you need. You can even use screening questions, which we definitely did to get your role in front of only the most qualified people. And then you can filter and prioritize to see who you'd like to interview and then eventually hire LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. And did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers, Visit LinkedIn, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash SBS. That's linkedin.com slash SBS to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply, of course. And our thanks to LinkedIn Jobs for, spo- for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. So 
the, my my account is we've been going through this with with Backbeat here. Um, when we started the business, we were a two member LLC. My partner Greg and I started actually. Yeah, I think by the time we formed the LLC, we were two members. We were three members for a very short period of time, but um, but we were certainly two members that weren't married or you know related in any other way, right? And so okay, sure. So we started an LLC. Uh, and that's what still exists today. Now, 10 years ago or whatever, I bought Greg out. So now the LLC is still a multi-member LLC so that it can be treated like a partnership. And it's me and my wife on the, uh, you know, in the, in the partnership, my new to this business accountant is strongly advising me to dissolve the LLC and just file it as a, uh, partnership, uh, well, as a schedule C return, Yes. You know, uh, as a sole proprietorship, essentially, and and get rid of the tax reporting burdens of filing as a partnership. You, it, this this seemed counterintuitive to me. I've always been told, no, 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 you don't want to muddy up your personal taxes with this stuff. Leave it this way. Have you heard differently? He seems to feel I, like I'm I'm making a stupid decision if I don't do this. Well, I. You know, I think there's there's arguments for both, and I'm probably not the best person to, no, I, to yeah. voice those, but sure. I have both of those things. We yeah. have LLCs, and I have uh, partnerships that run right down to the Schedule C. Um, I, if your accountant thinks it's uh, simple enough and you're it's it's overcomplicating things to make it the LLC, yeah. Um, I love I like the LLC. You know, protections, if you have it, what could be, uh, you know, issues that arise and you want to protect your personal assets. But if it's, uh, you know, I, so so I guess I would talk to my attorney at the same time before yeah. I made that decision yeah. and just ask him, what are the repercussions of this if something goes wrong? Now, you know, it depends on your business. Like we are, our real estate, we always hold those in LLCs uh, because our liability then is the assets of the LLC, not right? My, not our not personal your assets. not your house right. and everything yeah, else. Not, yeah, yes, not yet. But you know, if you have a pretty straightforward business, like you know, I, I have that uh, handbag business that yeah. we've talked about on the show, uh, that just runs to my Schedule C's. That, that there's just no liability to it. You know, it does about a million bucks a year, yeah. but it's not putting anything at risk per se. Uh, it's just a very simple thing, and it does can overcomplicate it and make it more expensive when you have to file. I mean, California LLC is 800 bucks a year. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I, I guess maybe just run it by your accountant and see, or your attorney. No, but it's, you're right. Have the, any red flags. The liabilities are the thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. To me, I think that is now, unless I'm not interpreting those correctly, but I believe I am on the, on that, but it would be a good question for your, your attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. If anybody out there has any advice on this feedback at business I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump too quickly into this. I mean, I, I have a, the LLC has existed in 2021 because it still exists. So even if we want to dissolve it before the calendar year ends, I've got plenty of time uh, to, you know, to, to make that move. So I'm, it's not like I have to decide in the next week or anything. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had something on your list, on your plate. I do. Today. Actually, you sent me a, uh, a thread on a Twitter, a tweet yeah. thread, however you want to call it, from a Julian Shapiro, which I really liked and we'll link in the show notes. And it was, it was all about this concept of a, what he calls a creativity faucet. And he was, you know, he uses, uh, musicians in this, is, you know, uh, and or his example example yeah. to talk about how you know certain types of musicians uh th they just constantly come out with new creative content and they generate hits for years and others do it once or twice and you don't hear from anymore one and, hit wonders there's plenty yeah, of them that's, yeah that's right and and what julian uh has said is look what these folks are doing, and there's an example of Ed Sheeran talking about it, is they're thinking of their their creativity as just one long pipe, and at the end, there's this faucet. And every time you sit down and you're trying to work through and be creative, in that pipe is a large quantity of what uh, it's backed up. It's He calls it wastewater. It's like the first mile of your pipe is just full of garbage. And it, the way these people get through that and that these ones that are very successful 
is they just get down to business and get through the garbage. They know that it's going to be garbage when they first start. They have to yep. work through this wastewater, right? Yep. To eventually get to something of quality. And when I read that, I thought, boy, you know, it's really a, a true thing. And But I, I also, my take on it is a little bit different too, is I also would call it a productivity faucet. Yeah. Especially for for small business owners. Oh yeah, yeah this I, applies to so many different things. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. And we always, you know, we we've done entire episodes all about how action is so much more powerful than ideas, and how getting in the rhythm of getting things done will carry you through, you know, failure and bad times, and to you know get you to the other side. Well, this concept is kind of the same thing, you know, um, and you see it with business, small business owners and people is. If you're willing to just get into it and start taking action, you can work through this wastewater that's in your pipes, if you will, yep. to get to, to the good stuff. But many, many people stop. They, they, they can't do it or they won't do it. They, they get going, they start, and they hit some log jam or something doesn't look right or they're just not happy with what's it's coming out. If it's terrible, right, you stop. You stop. So yeah. I, I have a, and I see this in the songwriting process all the time, but I see it in my, in my own just general processes. I'm, I'm not a, I, I do not consider myself a songwriter. I, I've written exactly one song. It charted fairly well, actually on college radio. And I figured I'd quit while I was ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not entirely true. The, the last part's not entirely true. It did chart yeah. pretty well, but um, the here, let, let me give you this example. If you wrote something crappy and gave it to me, or if I wrote something crappy and gave it to you, you would probably have no trouble editing that yes, and turning it into something better. Whether it would be great at the end, we don't know, but you could definitely take my crappy thing and make it better, right? And I could take your crappy thing and make it better. So that's the thought process I go through when, you know, with this this creativity faucet uh, analogy in place, when the crap is coming out, the wastewater, well, now I can edit myself and iterate on this. And a lot of times what editing becomes is throwing away and going with the next thing. But, you know, the the process of analyzing the crap becomes an iterative process. And you're like, yes, well, wait, there's, absolutely. there's one good little thing, or that's terrible, but I have an idea. It, you know, you're in it now. Now, instead of just trying to create from whole cloth, now I'm in the mode of editing, which is also a creative process. And while you're editing, you have ideas. And so they can become their own original things. You can say you were inspired by or whatever, but you can inspire yourself and you need to let yourself be your own inspiration sometimes, especially for us entrepreneurs and, and people, you know, who are acting as solopreneurs. You, you need to you need to just get the ideas out there. You know, if you had a team of 100 people and they were all terrible at putting out ideas, but but we're putting them out anyway. You could create value out of that. Well, if you have a right. team of one person, you can create value out of that. Let the bad ideas flow. It's totally yeah, fine. And, and yeah, I, and I think that many businesses get stuck in the, the wastewater, if you will, uh, and they they don't, to your point, they don't iterate enough to get out of it. If, if you see businesses that have bad customer service, they're only focusing on price, they don't adapt to change very well. They're they're always focusing too much on the competition, or your you know the owners micromanaging. Those folks are in the garbage, and the only way I believe because it because in in this uh, analogy, it, there's only one pipe. It's all coming from one all, spot. It, yeah, right. Right. There's, right. there's not this little things so you can finesse. So you have to work through it. And if you don't iterate, if you don't constantly try new things, like if your customer service department is you know, full of people that are not happy uh, because if if your employees that are in that department aren't happy, I guarantee your customers aren't happy uh, and vice versa. It, it's a circular thing. You have to start introducing some change and iterating and trying new things till you can get to, you know, to the good, to the good stuff. And, you know, as business owners, uh, there's a lot, there's so many things that hold, that hold us back, especially if we're just trying to get started, you know, uh, fear of failure, lack of support, uh, 
pressure, society pressure, right? Bad decisions. All this stuff lives in this wastewater of this pipe yeah. analogy here. And you have to keep pushing to get through them to get to that success. And I, I would argue that most people stop because they either don't get the support, they get they, all the naysayers, you know, go, go listen to our episode about fueling yourself on the tears of your naysayers. Very important to spin it and, and try to prove those people wrong and use that as your foundation to go. Yeah. Um, you have to keep working through these things. And, um, you know, this example of writing is great. You know, there's no shortcuts. You have to just start creating. One of the things for me that held me back as a writer for years was my fear of, uh, poor grammar, not using the stupid Oxford comma or whatever you want to, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. you know, over and over. Cause I always felt well, people are going to judge me and it held me back from creating uh, content and not until I, and I, and I really not a huge fan of using editors cause I like to do everything on my own and not wait. But once software started to improve to where it could advise me and I, I lean heavily on the Grammarly pro now that I love that, that application that's yeah. just really great. It's not always right, but most of the time it gets me to where I feel comfortable to where I can publish that. And it's allowed me to write a few books and uh, really changed my life. So finding tools to help you get through that wastewater is really important. And, y you know, you just have to start whatever you're going to do. You have to take that action. Don't be focused on the quality right away. No. You know, just get it going, write down your ideas Start with your actions that are very small. Uh, keep track of what you're doing. You know, use our to did list concept uh, where if you, you know, you want to keep track of the small little things you're doing all day. So at the end of the day, you can look and say, wow, look what I achieved. It wasn't some major breakthrough, but I've got 12 things done that have been on my plate and been bothering me for a while. That is what's going to carry you through to that quality stuff. Yeah, we, I, well, I, I'm not going to say we, I have a major issue with doing something, creating product, putting myself out there with things at which I am not already an expert. Now, the only way to do something new is to not be an expert at it. Right. I, I intellectually understand this, but yeah, I, sure. I, right. I, like obviously, you know, you can't be an, if, if they say it takes 10,000 hours to, to become an expert at something. Well, you know, that first hour, guess what? You ain't an expert, right? Like right. there's no way that you're going to be perfect the first time out. Of course, over the course of 10,000 hours, you realize that you're never going to be perfect. Um, and then, and then you continue spending, you know, another 10,000 hours and another 10,000. Uh, and, but I, I, I still catch myself being like, I'm, I can't, you know, I can't do this. I, I'm not an expert at this, so I shouldn't even try. And I, I have to catch myself at that even still today, it, you know, like, nope, go try it, figure it out. You'll iterate. You're smart enough to, you know, apply some filters and other people will, other people pay far less attention to your mistakes than you do. That's oh, absolutely. right. Like that's the key absolutely. to this. And especially when it's this kind of creative process where you can just let it flow. Like people don't necessarily have to see the wastewater. I mean, it, right. they are going to at some point, right? At some point, you're going to think, "Oh, this isn't wastewater," and you put something out there, like, "Oh, yeah, guess what? It turns out uh, it, it still does. was." Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. But and, uh, and you can that's okay. Yeah, you. Yeah. It is, and you can find examples of this all over. You know, if if you're not seeing the results that you expect, I would say, you know, a good analogy to think about is, "I'm stuck in this waste. I'm stuck in the wastewater. The yeah. pipe is just still clogged." So. Got to flush Look it. Look at what you're doing. You know, maybe you need to change your leadership style a little bit and introduce something different. You know, new ways to manage your employees, new opportunities and challenges for people that work for you if, if that's not working right. Uh, maybe you need to move pa past a product that didn't do well for you, like, you know, you mentioned. And making sure you understand the this uh, fallacy of sunk cost, uh, you know, where uh, you think, yeah. oh, I've, I've invested so much in, I can't give it up. I, I think a great example of a company that does this is other world computing and we're in the apple the tech space so we know this company well and larry o'connor and his team over there we see the outside where they've iterated and introduced you know dozens maybe hundreds of new products and things going and whatever but you see this constant iteration and i guarantee you on the on the inside there's failure after failure but 
on the outside, you know, it's like, oh, look, they've got a new product. And even when they didn't have new products coming out, they embraced generating revenue other ways. For a while, they were, and maybe they still are, but they were selling, you know, refurbished, uh, you know, Mac, Macintosh stuff and sure. phones and iPads for a while. Kind of in the in between as they transition from one type of business to another. I think it's a great example. I think eBay does the same thing where they try new things. Many of them fall flat on their face and fail, and they just, okay, we're going to abandon that, but we're going to keep this little nugget that we learned from this process, um, and we're going to put it in with another product or another service. And so somebody on that tweet stream mentioned uh, Pixar's 22 rules of storytelling and specifically highlighted number 12. So we will link to all of them. But number 12 says discount the first thing that comes to mind and the second, Uh, the third, uh, the fourth, the fifth, get the obvious out of the way. Surprise yourself. That's, that's the key, right? Is like, yeah, don't do the obvious stuff, but you have to acknowledge it because otherwise it's going to be there because it's obvious. So acknowledge it, look at it. It's okay. Right. And then once you've looked at it, now you're not going to be obsessed about it anymore. Move on. Right. It's, it's, it's like meditation, right? When, when your mind, the idea is to have a completely clear mind with meditation, we, any meditator, whether they are their first day or their, you know, hundredth year of meditating will tell you they fail at that. We fail at that all the time. The yep. trick is learning to acknowledge that. Yeah, there's going to be these things that our minds obsess about. So the best thing to do is to acknowledge them. There it is. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing. That's right. Okay. Then you're freed from it. <laughs> Usually, you know, so yeah, yeah. no, it's, yeah. it's great. So it's I, great. you know, I, I love this concept and I think we've, you know, people that are successful have embraced it and, you know, without knowing it, but just getting it started, taking action. This is why we love to think of uh, the term small business as a verb instead of just, you know, uh, a, a just a term because we're, the, the folks that are going to make it are the ones that are just constantly taking action, iterating, so, not getting stuck. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's only way I know how to get through bad times and we're all going to have them. We, we've had a rough, you know, year yeah. or so of this COVID thing and, uh, getting through all this stuff and making your business, you know, be as successful as possible. You just have to keep moving. So that's I, how I, I that's how I do it. I realized last, you know, I was away for 10 days uh, for that trip. And it's the second time this month or last month that I was away for, you know, a, a stretch. And the first time I really, I, I didn't intentionally detach from work, but schedule wise, I kind of did. And I came back really, you know, stressed about a few things because I didn't keep up with stuff and I didn't really plan not to keep up with stuff. And this trip, uh, I was a a lot more intentional about it. And I realized, you know, I deal with my stress by being productive. That's how I that's how I, you know, make that go away. And, you know, thankfully, the the dumpster emptiers woke us up at, you know, 7 a.m. every day. So I had plenty of time. To uh, to get my work done <laughs> and be plenty productive, which was great. You know, and then I take a nap and then we go to the concerts. It was fine. So yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. So you know, if if you believe in this concept or you have examples, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co. Um, share your successes and failures with us here, so we can uh, help each other continue to uh, to succeed. That's the idea. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. As he said. Multiple times, feedback at businessshow.co. That's three S's in in the middle. They're all together. And then a fourth S, you know, earlier in the word. But but it is feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure you check out our sponsors. Of course, like I said, netsuite.com. That's N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com slash S-B-S. As well as linkedin.com slash S-B-S. Have a good week. We'll see you in a week. Keep living that charmed life. Thanks, Shannon. Hey, thank you, Dave.